Hi everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome to the start of the week. It's a brand new MCN. This is going to be a busier week because there's going to be new content announcement week. On Friday, we should be, if I've got my dates right, seeing the live stream of what is coming in the April month update. And of course, uh, we've got some other things that will be going on, so it should be a very busy week. But of course, we've got a mop up from over the weekend, a few things here and there, responses from Kabam the here, there, some other things going on, alliance wars, broken things and matchmaking. Hey, we're going to cover it. I thought I'd kick off the video by just a friendly reminder to the community. Look, if things pee you off in the game, just walk away for a little time, just check back, read nodes, figure out best ways to take things down and maybe play another game if you are going to be somebody like this that literally went out to the forums to, to kind of say the person who created the Sasquatch uh, fight or kind of alliance will showcase wishing them well it's not really nice this we've been here before with people in the community that felt vocal to kind of like say this stuff and look anytime that anything in Marvel Contest Champions pees me off I literally will just go, do you know what, I'll take a walk away, I'll maybe take a break for the weekend, I'll come back. Yes, Alliance Wars Showcase has a time limit and I do I do sympathise with the frustration when it comes to that. I like the idea of the content, it was not brilliantly executed. I think a lot of us agree with that particular point. But look, um, people like this need to be banned and of course on the forums they were banned. I'm not saying banned in game, but what I'm saying is just like, look, if you if you if this is in your nature to be like someone like this, just don't. It's weird and look, don't let the game exist in your head rent free. There's no point for it. Go and do something else. Play a different game and just walk away. Yes, you have to do it for that piece, that piece of King Groot, if you desperately want it. But one thing to note is, and as I have said before, you've you've had two weeks to do it. So you've got another week to farm units farm revives, farm boosts, and things that are going to make that particular fight better for you. Rank up a champion or two. You have two weeks. Don't let frustration get to that point that someone else does something like this. It just ain't cool. Don't do it. Let's now move on to talk about Alliance Wars. As a lot of you know on the channel, we've been covering a couple of stories, actually three, I think, stories, two of which most recently you might know about. Uh, new uh, new nation, uh, SGA, that other unnamed alliance we've been covering as well, have all had varying different types of issues with alliance wars, whether it's matchmaking, whether or not it's been thrusted up to a different tier. I mean, a good example is our alliance was thrusted up to a different tier, and um, since that particular video that we covered on the Friday news show, uh, the alliance we had to kind of quickly scramble together to kind of get our um, uh, to get a new map ready so to speak and that's the thing isn't it like you some things happen that you kind of know are going to happen but other times you know you might be like oh well we shouldn't have been bumped up to this particular stage we shouldn't have matched here we shouldn't be on this particular map and such forth but there's been a bit of a development with the alliance war situation i'm glad kabam are looking to actually deal with this and compensate so this is on the forums at the moment. It is one of the top messages, which is the one in orange, saying there is currently an issue where some alliances are unable to find a match in alliance wars or are receiving buys without getting the benefits of the win. We'll be adjusting the season points of the alliances that are affected within the coming weeks and we'll be working to compensate them for their missed per war rewards as well. So that's really positive. Uh, that's really positive news. Um, unfortunately, it, it's, it's hard to know how that's going to be received. And when I say received, I'm not being like, you know, you, you could go, oh, well, received by the player base. Like, I am happy. I am happy. I am not happy with those rewards. What I'm seeing is saying is from a point of season points, will that be beneficial for some uh, of the alliances? Would they get what they believe they would be at from a seasonal rank at this moment in time? Will they not? So it needs to be really seen. Of course, that will affect other people going, yeah, well, that's great. Our alliance should uh, is now up to platinum whatever, gold whatever, silver whatever. And it's like all of a sudden you may, may cost you to go down. Maybe, maybe not. Have to see uh, with it. But of course, this will take some time to give out and of course, the per war rewards as well. Additionally, we are working to address an issue where new members of an alliance are unable to place defenders for the next war after joining. We are working to address this 
but will require future update. Now, this is the this is the something that uh, I think it's good. Kabamba acknowledging this. Of course, this came from a length of time where players in these alliances didn't really hear back from Kabam. Of course, we saw a support ticket from Kabam, uh, but it was a very generic one. It was very copy copy paste, and of course, was very kind of disappointing because people in alliances these specific alliances affected are now two seasons deep and they are being affected by it you know we saw yesterday and yes not yesterday uh, saturday's video you know new nation um have recently been affected by that and it, it costs seasons and for those that may be kind of like um going ha ha to those or i'm not sure that people will be like that but hey it's the internet and uh, people are like that uh, this could affect your alliance at any given time and, and that's something to be warned about as much as this kind of like, oh, this affected someone else. Oh, it doesn't doesn't matter to us. Uh, it, it could happen. I'm not saying it will or won't. Again, it could happen until this particular bug has been uh, addressed. And they are working, as I said, to address it. So fingers crossed on that uh, to be uh, repaired and dealt with. Of course, something to mention about Alliance Wars and we kind of move on. Um, that uh, little Mad Dog pointed out that uh, we've got... I think it's the change to the wording has not been altered. Uh, so the the thing mentioned here, as Little Maddox says, current tactic descriptions as of March 22nd uh, is not acknowledging the uh, the change as per what is on the forum. So that's just going to give you a bit of an idea. If you're looking at it right now and going, oh dear, you know, am I planning myself correctly? Which I think a lot of people are, uh, just to kind of cover some stuff. And as I said here, uh, please communicate uh, this to the tactics update to show the missing items. X magic, uh, each prowess now reduces purify ability actually by 34%. Uh, Magic Thief still shows that miss builds indestructible as well. Um, and oh, that was a good point. It wasn't updated with the crush last time either. Alliance Wars, I think per season and tactics, are very hit and miss. And that's that's always something that seems to be more of a uh, relevant thing at the moment. And I really wish it wasn't like a relevant thing on seasons. It would, it'd be just so good to just get a season right. Um, but uh, I don't know, Decay and Sugar Pill, did that go okay? Oh, you know, so many layers to this. But in any case, uh, Jack says uh, that he chatted to the game team and it seems they have a fix going in later today. This was as of Friday the 22nd. I think got my days right with that. And this time the fix will be for English only versions of the game. So, you know, for warning to those that maybe read the game in any other language, as it needs to go through the localization process, it will uh, make its way to other versions soon after so it could be by the time you see this video that has been dealt with and that's been an update in in that so some good news with alliance wars some things we still have to go you know with that top message when where how will alliances be happy with what they've been compensated with uh, and stuff like that so yeah we'll have to see how this uh gets resolved now i think the way that kabam kind of like deal with bugs or from a point of view of being communicated to is they're very specific and how they want their level of uh, communication on it. I mean, here's a good example, like a bug in the game at the moment or an issue or I wouldn't say, I wonder if this is glitch or not, or thing that I don't think a lot of us appreciate is this. You can see like there's a kind of flaming statue et in the... Uh, Asgardian throne room, I would say. I would say, yeah. And this is a, as kind of well put here, uh, it blocks the view. I, I don't know if this. Uh, for me, I think this is a more recent bug than it's been a longer term bug. But either way, it's annoying. Now, I don't know if this is device specific. It's definitely something on an iPad um, Pro that I've got, which is from 2021, and. I see. I think I see it from time to time on my iPhone 11 from 2019. Is it or maybe earlier than that? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I'm definitely not upgrading them anytime soon because you know it's just like, well, that's, that's a lot of money just gone. Anyway, right. Rant aside. Um, look, the point about how bugs are communicated is a, is a problem. How uh, bugs are communicated back to the player base as to what's going on with something again is another issue. We saw with the Alliance War situation that players were just kept in the dark for a couple months. We've seen with the loss mastery point, which I appreciate. Kabam, I've got a lot of work to kind of give that back to the player base. But this is this is the 
the five, there was a five month long wait time for that to be resolved. Although, and the communication was there, it was just like, Kabam didn't want to share anything unless it's substance, which again, I get, but the problem is, we've got players with problems and issues. And do you want to keep playing a bugged game with a developer that doesn't really give you that kind of answer as to what's actually going on. Of course, I totally understand games development and development in general is not as plain sailing as I think a lot of us would like it to be. And there's always issues that kind of like spring up from time to time. But I do remember a time when communication around dealing with issues was a bit more proactive. Maybe it's sometimes a little bit transparent and Kabam do do an okay job to let us know what's going on. But since there was that 2020 kind of burnt out and bored stage. We had, in my opinion, a lot more like quick transparency. This is why the Trello board was created. Now, it's a bit difficult for me to, because I framed this particular research and this bit of coverage for MCN today, uh, which I'm researching on, on over the weekend and put out and record on Sunday and put out for Monday. There's actually been a bit more productivity. Now, I don't know what the case of affairs was was from all of this. There just seems to be some of the bugs that we've mentioned actually appearing in here. Like I, I've checked today, and I think I checked earlier re or recently, and it wasn't the extent of coverage on some of the things. I think we actually pointed out for the video um, at some point. So look, it's like I want to say it's like the, the the term, isn't it, or the the phrase that cat amongst the pigeons, and you know the pigeons are going to move, aren't they? And uh, it, it's kind of like yeah, like rot up the backside kind of thing to say, look, we just want to see a bit of communication on on kind of things that are mentioned. And again, I don't know what's the best way to kind of get this um, get this level of communication. I think a lot of us want, and I understand. Look, I think all of us understand from Kabam's perspective, it's difficult to develop games. I think that's a lot of thing for other other games. The problem we have as a player base is that we're going into pieces of content, finding these bugs out for ourselves, which of course we're, test we're, we're the beta testers for stuff in game, is that we fall victim to falling down the big hole. It's like going walking across a field and finding out there's a mine shaft. Like you, you kind of go over the top of the boards, not realizing the boards are there, and because there's no warning signs, and that's the big thing, warning signs, you fall into the pit. And let's face it, little Jimmy stuck down a well and needs Lassie in order to kind of get them out. You know, uh, what's uh, or Skippy? You know, um, what's the matter, Skip? Someone stuck down, dropped down a well. You know, you know what I mean. Like it's just having that that element of warning, but also the element of kind of like. Fixing the issue, taking the person outside out of, out of the well, like getting a winch, pulling the person out, and making sure it doesn't happen again. But of course, things of, of course will happen again because it's a dangerous it's a dangerous game. There'll always be pitfalls on stuff. But it just would be nice to see at times this kind of element of uh, communication. Just to find out what's what's going on with. Okay, so just wrapping up this particular segment's right segment right here. I think a lot of us understand it from command's perspective there's they're a victim to their own success if you have a successful game that covers a multitude of different devices then of course not everything is going to be compatible so there's going to be a lot of bugs i think even more so if content is bugged when it's released and let's face it a lot of the time it is there's so many different types of interactions that again causes a problem behind the scenes the extent of coding that they have to do, the extent of trying to make something that's years old still consistently work is very much a problem, especially as they innovate and go in different directions. I think we all understand that. We get that. But the level of communication on bugs is important for players so they don't, as we quite eloquently put it, you fall down that mine shaft. You want to see a sign saying, look, watch out. Don't. Uh, we need to, it's going to take us a week to put boards over this or kind of concrete the whatever so you can walk across this you know what i mean so um yeah something that's going to be a better process of interaction transparency and communication similar to the trello board but as i said the, the weird thing about it was i thought last week that, that trello board hadn't been updated as um you know frequently as it, it should be as it was and one thing i should should have really checked actually just kind of like see if i can back up my point is when, yeah, it's like them, um, you know, Mike put something on the 22nd of March, like 22nd of March, uh, added this card to top issues the 22nd of March. So maybe that's the 19th of March right there. I, I, I don't know. Like I can't, I, I definitely see stuff that has been added recently, but um, yeah, it's just a case of like, is that the case that that was, 
that last week we were quite sparse with kind of like some of the updates to this stuff. But you, look, it's down to like how you see, um, how do you see it? Uh, you know, as Dr. Zola says, it's hard enough to have access to streams, third party sites and creators, as well as a Trello board site that often feels non-updated. And that may have been the case. Um, I don't know if those Trello boards are used internally by Kabam, not to kind of like go away from it, like say like, oh, you know, is it a bad idea to have Trello boards? A lot of games developers will look to use those Trello, Trello boards. And the thing is, I don't know if Kabam devs have their own internal system and it, would that be something that Kabam would want to share with the community? Like an active place you can go to that the player base sees what Kabam are actually working on. So, and that's the thing, it may be that Kabam don't want to give that level of communication. But I think something needs to be improved on that. As I said, it's a problem if you are a player going into a piece of content and knowing, not knowing it's bugged, it can cost you. I remember the Venom Pool, Deadpool uh, variant, and when we, as a player base, went into that, we had to like stop. We couldn't get through it because it was bugged, and players didn't realize that. And it's only when they came to the forums that they were able to find out. And that content went live and people were fighting that within the hour and going, like, the whole community was going, what the heck did we do? We could get through, I think, with like Mr. Fantastic, but it just did, it just wasn't good. And I don't think it really affect, uh, um, reflected, uh, you know, um, uh, Kabam in the most favorable light. So yeah, it's just down to like how we do that to improve bug communication. But as I said, like there's some glimmers of hope when Kabam, I don't know, it's starting to use, you know, these top areas here, these messages, just to kind of let the player base know what's going on. Would there be a multitude of them? Quite possibly. Is it important to put like, I don't know, a clickable banner to take you to the bugs and known issues segment just to say, just to let you know, guys, this is what bugs we are working on at the moment and have a regular update every three days or, or whatever, just to kind of like alert people. And if there's emergency bugs, do stuff like this. Look, I don't know, this is down to Kabam to find a good way to communicate in future. But what are your thoughts on the current bugs and communications uh, with Kabam? Do you like it? Do you think it's okay? Do you not like it? Thoughts in the comments. And we finished the show with uh, uh, arena results for and predictions for Iron Man, the OG one, great champion for uh, raids, AQ raids, and uh, Mr. Odin, who's very good at giving that pre-fight. And of course, he's very good in his own right as well. So the results that we've got for Iron Man and Odin are as follows. If you want Iron Man to get the six star, we don't have any result information for that one, but I can imagine you're putting it at least 20 mil to get that particular champ. Getting a five star, getting some shards, six star shards, that is, you know, nine mil was getting it. Great champion for AQ raids. So look, in the round two, you obviously want to at least put some effort to grab that if you're interested in that champion. Look, Odin as well, uh, 55 mil got position 112, down towards the bottom, 44 mil got position 246. I can imagine 40 mil would have got that champion clean, maybe even a little bit less. 21 mil for the 1% to 5% 5 star and 6 star shards um, for that. And yeah, my predictions are as follows, 40 mil for the 6 star Odin, 20 mil for the 5 star Odin, 6 star Iron Man, I'll go with 20 mil for that one and 8 mil for the 5 star Iron Man as well. Good luck in the round two when you're going up for these champions. And yeah, thanks very much for watching this edition of the MCN. Check out some other content located on screen. Check out the links in the description for some of the stories on the forums. And I'll see you later on. Bye-bye.